Welcome all my fellow Washington brethren and sistren. I am your man and Washington football fan, Lou. Thank you for joining me here on the Washington Football Report. Man, I tell you what, <laughs> I had to go to the throwback all dressed in all black like the omen for this one. Um, new name, new jersey, same shit. All right, it's the same Redskins, man. You can change the name, but, you know, all of the same nonsense remains. But look, it's going to be a process. This is not an overnight fix. And the swift movement by Ron Rivera in this moment shows you that the culture, although it seems like it's not changing, okay, is changing. Because had Bruce and company still been here, he wouldn't have been cut right off out of the gate. This thing would have drug on, just like the whole situation. And, you know, we don't know all of the facts and all of the details um, with the wide receiver that's on the NFI list right now. Uh, but uh, similar situation in terms of getting in trouble. Uh, this is a little bit different in the, ter in, in the terms of, you're talking domestic violence. And I want to give a shout out to uh, Taco Boss 21 for hitting me up on IG with this bombshell because, you know, I'm at home you know, trying to get some stuff together. I thought this was going to be an early bedtime for me on a Friday night. I'm extremely tired. So I thought, man, I'm going to pack it in early tonight. Call it a night nice and early. Get up tomorrow um, early in the morning and, and get the day started right. And um, I got a message on IG. Have you heard about Darius Geis? What are you talking about? What about Darius Geis? Did he get injured again? It's the first thing I'm talking thinking about. Did he get injured again? And, uh, you know, I opened up Bleach Report and there it is. Darius Geis arrested on domestic violence charges. Uh, he turned himself in uh, and the Redskins moved swiftly and cut him. And, you know, the first thing I thought about, and this probably doesn't even, you know, do this any real justice, but th the first thing I thought about when I, I, I saw that and, and my, my heart dropped, it sunk. Um, and I don't know why I was surprised, and we'll get into that a little bit uh, later on, but the first thing I thought about was, Damn, the Philadelphia Eagles were right. <laughs> and, and if you recall, um, on the on draft day, the Philadelphia Eagles it was this big story that came out, and I, I don't know if it ever if it was ever substantiated or not. But uh, there was this report that Darius guys had a blow up with the Philadelphia Eagles. They were thinking about drafting him. Um, it, it was a mess, um, you know, when he had a, a meeting with them, and so they didn't take him. That story actually came out on draft night, but it reportedly happened, you know, during the process. Um, and, and so don't know if it was true or not, but something happened because Darius Geis, a lot of people felt like I thought he was going to go late first round, early second round. And, and we got him late second round, damn near into the third round. And we felt good. We traded back. I think the team wanted carry on Johnson ultimately traded back and got Darius Geis felt like we won something there, got a a. a a fringe first round back, late stages of the second, and traded back. It felt like a win at the time, but uh, as we later found out uh, via injuries and now this, um, it wasn't a win. And every time we feel like we're winning something, <laughs> we actually aren't. <laughs> Have you noticed that trend yet? You know, every time we feel like, man, we got a steal, and we actually, actually are the ones getting stolen on. And so this is another example of us thinking that we got over on everybody else and we were the ones actually getting over on. And so this one, this one isn't going to sting as, as much as it would have had we not had the depth. And, and this is what we talked about yesterday. We just talked about this yesterday, okay? We got depth for the first time in a long time. Now, you may not love the depth, and I told you, a lot of you were bitching and complaining and, and moaning about all of the signings in the offseason. And oh, my God. Remember, we talked about why are they signing Peyton Barber? We got 87 backs. Well, this is why you sign a Peyton Barber. OK, now you have an extra guy. Now that we talked about keeping five running backs the entire offseason. That was the, the thought process. And remember. Same thing with the wide receiver position. We didn't know what was going to shake out with that position, but you just add as many bodies as you can because you don't know what's going to happen. Kelvin Harmon goes down, torn ACL, and now you, the Redskins sign Dontrell Emmon. You, you have to have extra guys. And in, in this case, 
We didn't know what was going to happen, but Darius Geis already had a track record of getting injured. We didn't know he was going to uh, participate in something like this that was going to get him cut. We just didn't know if he was going to be able to stay healthy, but you needed an insurance policy just in case. That's why AD is so important, and that's why he's not going anywhere. But now you take it a step further and you say to yourself, this is why you sign a Peyton Barber. You're thinking to yourself, we don't need this many guys. We got enough backs. It's our deepest position on our team outside of the defensive line. Well, this is why you do, you do things like that. Prepare yourself for anything that could happen. The Redskins did this, and that's why I told you I was actually impressed with the offseason the Redskins turned in. No, it wasn't a bunch of high-profile signings. It wasn't a bunch of guys that were high uh, household names. And they're not, they weren't a, a bunch of guys that was going to get you excited. However, there were a bunch of guys there that was going to provide depth. In the case of an emergency, in the case of injuries, we had other guys that could step in and the, the talent level wouldn't drop off the table. So, you know, not having Darius guys, you know what I feel like with guys, and we've, we've had this discussion before because why? Because we're the Redskins slash the Washington football team and these things always happen to us. So we've been through this before. But you know what this feels like? This feels like Junior Gallette all over again. You really, this feels like Reuben Foster all over again. I, I really never had Darius, guys. Hard to miss something I never really had, uh, okay? I'm just going to be really honest with you. We got bits and pieces. We got flashes. As Randy Jordan talked about, and I talked about it on the show last night, he, he teased us with an appetizer. We wanted the whole entree. We never got the whole entree. That's cool. You know what I mean? I can get full off of an appetizer, all right? But I'm good. I'm going to push that to the side. We got other items here that are ready to be used, ready to be consumed. And so we're going to move on. It, this was the one position on the offensive side of the football that we could afford a blow like this. We could absorb this one and continue on because we've got enough backs. And the, the next guy up is going to be Peyton Barber, and we're not going to blink. So if you're out there looking for a pity party from me, you're not going to get it because I'm not going to miss Darius Geis because I don't really, I never really got to know Darius Geis, the football player. And, and I want to take it a step further. This was something that was looming. I don't know if you Redskins fans were hearing this. There were innuendos out there floating around that this new regime, Ron Rivera and company, felt like Darius Geis was a little immature and that he could potentially be cut I wasn't buying the latter portion of that, that he could potentially be cut. However, I did believe that they felt like he was a bit immature. And he's one of those guys that's eccentric. I wouldn't necessarily call him immature as much as eccentric. After this latest episode, though, I, I may have to walk that back. Maybe he is a bit immature. However, I, I just felt like he was eccentric. I thought he was a little unique. He was a little different, you know. And you can't coach everybody the same. You can't treat everybody the same. He was one of those guys, happy-go-lucky, fun-loving guy, a little rough around the edges, sort of like Clinton Portis, you know, a different cat. But, you know, when, when you, you turn on the lights on Sunday, he's a guy that gives you everything he's got. That's what I was expecting from him. Never really got that. You know, we got, we, like I said, we didn't get enough Darius guys to miss him. You know, so I was looking forward to him potentially staying healthy this year and having an opportunity to show what he was fully capable of. Unfortunately, this is what happens when you're trying to build a new culture and you're trying to instill that. You have to make examples out of people like this when they do things like that. Darius Geis did something that is egregious. And look, don't know the story. Don't know all of the intimate details. The bottom line is he turned himself in. Not saying that that admits, you know, you're admitting that you did anything wrong, but obviously something happened. Redskins not staying to figure it out. They're trying to create this new culture. The way that you do that is you show other people we're not standing for this. We and, and Rivera already made it abundantly clear after the Washington Post um, article. We will not stand for any kind of tomfoolery of any kind, especially when it comes to females. You know, the NFL has cracked down on domestic violence. All of the sports, for that matter, have cracked down on domestic violence as they should. And after that Washington Post article, the Redskins could ill afford anything negative with females. So Darius guys had to be made an example out of. And the Redskins didn't waste any time doing it. 
Again, it sucks because we've been down this road before. We can't have nice things. I've already told you this before. Uh, whether it's the Redskins or now the Washington football team, we can't have nice things. I'm hoping Ron Rivera changes all of that, but it's a process. I know that this isn't going to happen overnight. I'm not expecting it to, but God damn it, during this process, could we at least allow Ron to get this thing off the ground before guys try to F it up and send it sideways and derail it? Good grief. Man, I tell you what, th this is how we do business. But maybe this is one step backwards to take two steps forward because if you're going to build this thing the right way, you need the right guys in the locker room. And maybe Darius Geis wasn't one of the guys that needed to be in this locker room. Mm -hmm.